If you're watching this video, I'll assume that you've already read the Week 10 intro page, you've read Chapter 8 and completed the reading quiz in Mastering Geography, and have you worked your way through all of the video clips on the various climate types. And now you're on this video clip, How to Classify Climates, i.e. how to do the assignment. You can see that the assignment is shown right below here. If you want, you can pause the video and go open the assignment. That might be helpful. Or just continue watching the video here and you can open it at a later time. You'll notice there's also four documents listed down here. These are all linked into the actual assignment, so you, you likely won't need to access them directly from here because you can access them from the assignment. I'm going to go ahead and click on the assignment. And there you see it. So the assignment says use the flow chart provided right here to classify the eight weather stations and determine their locations. Follow the instructions below. First, I ask you to read all the video clip or watch all the video clips first. Hopefully you've done that. Then you're going to open up these two documents. One of them is the flow chart you're going to use to classify climates here and on our next exam. And the other is the actual weather station data for the exam. Let's go ahead and open these. First, the flow chart. I'm actually going to open it here as its own document. Save it off to the side. And then also the weather station data sheet I'm going to open as well. And again, save it off to the side for now. Let's take a look at those documents that we just opened up. The first is a flow chart that we're going to use to classify the climates for the weather station data that I give you. There's two pages. The first page is going to be most useful and you're going to use for every station. The second page is only for the B climates. And you'll see that later. Important notes about this flow chart, you always, always, always start at the top. And the first thing you do is determine if your weather station is an E climate. So you work your way through here. An E climate, if the warmest month is less than 50 degrees Fahrenheit. If not, then you move on down the flow chart. If it is, if those conditions are met, then you go over here and figure out the second letter, or in some cases, the second and third letter. The other document that we opened is the actual data for the assignment. There's eight stations, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different weather stations, and I've given you monthly temperature and precipitation data, both in, in the metric system, System International, and in the English system. Okay, so we have our, our temperature and precipitation data, and we're going to use this data to determine the climate type using the flowchart. Once we know the, the code for the climate type, we put it in here. And we can also name the climate if it's tropical wet or Mediterranean or whatnot. And then we're going to give a brief explanation of why it is that type of climate. As a hint here, you can basically just look at the letters that you get in the climate code and define each letter for your explanation. Then lastly, once you've figured out all eight weather stations, then and only then, you're going to go back and try to figure out the precise location. There's eight cities that I've listed here, and you're going to match the city to the location. What I recommend that you do, again, is first you're going to do all eight climate typing exercises, and then plot each of these locations on a world map. And then you can use some logical thinking in the process of elimination to determine which climate is which. We'll come back to that in a few minutes. But first, let's learn how to use the flowchart. Let's get started. We're going to start with Station 1, and I'm going to go through this whole example with you. The first question on the flowchart determines if it's an E climate. An E climate is if the warmest month is less than 50 degrees. So let's check that. Let's find the warmest month in Fahrenheit. Oh my goodness, look at all these temperatures. They're super hot. I can pretty much tell you right now it's not going to be an E climate. In fact, you can probably guess which of the 
main climate types this one's going to be just by the very warm temperatures year round. But anyway, right now we're looking for the warmest temperature. Here it is, 86 degrees. That is certainly not less than 50 degrees. So it's not an E climate. And really, hopefully you're thinking it's an A climate. Look how warm it is. This has got to be near the equator somewhere. So it wasn't an E climate. So if not an E, then move on to the B climates. So let's check out the B climates. If precipitation is less than 30 inches per year, then use the charts on the back to determine if it is a B climate. If the precipitation is greater than 30 inches per year, then move on to the A climates. Okay, we got to figure out if precipitation is more or less than 30 inches a year. Precipitation, our total, 82 inches a year. Oh my goodness, this is not a desert. All right, let's go back. So the precipitation was greater than 30 inches per year. We don't have to worry about it being a desert. And we're going to move on to the A climates. All right, it's an A climate if the average coolest month is warmer than 64.4 degrees Fahrenheit. If not, move on to C climates. So we need to find the average coolest month and see if it's warmer than 64.4. Coolest month, coolest month, coolest month. 76. The coolest month is 76 degrees. The coolest month, if it's warmer than 64.4, it's an A climate. Bingo! We got ourselves an A climate here, folks. The warmest or the coolest month was 76 degrees. That's far warmer than 64.4. So this is an A climate. But we're not done yet. We still need to figure out which subtype of A climate we're dealing with. The A climates, as is pointed out here, are consistently warm with all months above 64.4 degrees Fahrenheit, and we have a lot of annual precipitation. So we have to figure out now if it's a tropical rainforest climate, or a tropical wet climate, a tropical monsoon, or a tropical savanna. We remember that that second letter in our climate code has to do with precipitation. F means year-round moisture, M means it's a monsoon, and W means it's a winter dry season. All right, let's check it out. If it's a tropical rainforest or tropical wet climate, it says all months receive precipitation in excess of 2.4 inches. Let's go check it out. All months receive precipitation more than 2.4 inches. Well, that is not true here. We definitely have some drier periods of the year. So it's not a tropical wet climate. And actually, I meant to do this earlier. This might be a good time to look at the temperatures again and think about if this is in the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere. Where do we tend to have the warmer temps? It looks like these middle six months are warmer on average than the outer six months. So this must be a, a, a summer period here, which is in northern hemisphere summer. So this is a northern hemisphere weather station, likely. And you'll notice that they get a lot of rain in the summer. So they have a winter dry season. So that might be what our climate type is. But we'll have to check with monsoon and winter dry season codes here on the flowchart. So we know it's not a tropical rainforest. Let's look over here. A tropical monsoon. It has a short dry season with one or more months receiving less than 2.4 inches an otherwise excessively wet rainy season, 6 to 12 months ITCZ dominant. 6 to 12 months of rainfall with one or more months receiving less than 2.4 inches. Hmm. Let's check it out. Well, there's one, two, three, there's just four months that receive a lot of rain, and then the rest of them don't. Hmm, let me look at that again. One or more months receiving less than 2.4 inches, sure. Otherwise, an excessively wet rainy season, 6 to 12 months. I wouldn't say there's 6 months of rain. And also, I'm remembering from the video clips that to be a monsoon, you generally have over 100 inches of rain. Let's check out our rainfall here. 82 inches of rain. That's not, that's not that much. I don't think it's a, a monsoon. Let's, let's keep going. Hopefully this one works. Tropical savanna, summer wet season. Well, we already identified it was wet in the summer. Winter dry season, 
ITCZ dominant six months or less. Yes, we have six months or less of intense precipitation. I'm going with an AW climate. So our climate name is a tropical savanna and it's an AW climate. We can write that in here, AW tropical savanna. For the explanation, you can just follow each letter. The A indicates warm year-round temperatures, and the W indicates a winter dry season. So that's our explanation. I also encourage you to write an N over here to remind you that it's probably in the northern hemisphere. You might also want to remember that it's somewhat similar to a monsoon, so it might be in a location that is really close to the monsoon, even though we consider it a tropical savanna. We're not going to deal with locations just yet, however. We'll leave that till the end. Let's go on to our second example. Following the flow chart, we need to start at the top and make sure it's not an E climate. The warmest month is less than 50 degrees if it's an E climate. Well, the warmest month is far greater than 50 degrees, so it's definitely not an E climate. That means we're going to go on and check the B climates. And oh my goodness, check this out. It only gets one inch of rain a year. I think we can pretty much safely say it's a desert, but let's key it out. So we determined it wasn't an E climate, not a polar climate, so then we have to go on to the next one. If We can check if it's a B climate. If the precipitation is less than 30 inches per year, then use the chart on the back to determine if it's a B climate. Clearly it has less than 30 inches of rain a year. It had one inch. Notably, we're not going to use these on the front of this sheet, we're going to go use those on the back. If it didn't meet this 30 inch requirement, it couldn't possibly be a desert and we'd move on. But if it's less than 30 inches a year, we need to check. In some places in the world, that would be a desert. In some places of the world, it would not be a desert. So here we are on the back. We're going to follow these instructions. Determine the average annual temp and average annual precipitation. That was given to us in the problem. Determine if the precipitation is distributed evenly during the year. Does it get more than 70% of the rain in the summer, more than 70% in the winter, or is it evenly distributed? All right, we got to go figure that out. First, we need to figure out where summer and winter is. It, and it's either we're going to divide it into six month blocks, the inner six months and the outer six months. In this case, the outer six months are definitely warmer. So this must be in the southern hemisphere. You might want to make a note of that over in the margin. So that means it looks like it gets most of its precipitation in the winter months, the cooler months. But let's figure out the percentage. Add up the six inner months precipitation. So that's from April through September. That's 1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.7, 0 0.9 inches of rain are in the winter months. and there's only one inch of rain total, so 0.9 divided by 1, that's 90% of the rain comes in the winter. So that means here we are. If more than 70% of the precipitation comes in the winter, use the winter concentration chart. That's true for us because it was 90%. Which one is that? Winter concentration chart. There we are. And we're going to plot the average annual precipitation and the average annual temperature. We're going to have to go back and look for those on the data sheet. Average annual precipitation is 1 inch. Average annual temperature 64.6 .6 degrees. So 1 inch and 64.6 .6 degrees. Actually this is going to fall right on that dotted line. Did they define that dotted line anywhere? They do up here. 64.4 degrees is the dotted line. So we're actually at 1 inch and 64.6, .6. so we're just above that line. We are in the BWH climate classification. So we write BWH on our assignment sheet. We can go up here and see that the, the name of that climate is a subtropical desert. We can record that as well. And then for the explanation, we define each of these terms. B means dry, W stands for Vusta, that means dry as well, and H is hot. This is a true desert, a hot desert. One last comment. If when we plotted it, it would have ended up over here, then we would have gone back to the flowchart to see if it was an A, C, or D climate. 
we would have simply moved on down the flowchart.